That's my dog. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't already know, my name is Bryce and I just got back from a little backpacking trip. I did about a 35 mile loop with some other guys, uh, partially on the Appalachian Trail. In Virginia, we did the Triple Crown Loop. It's a trail I've been wanting to do for a long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the gear that I took on that trip. Normally I do my gear videos before I go out on the trail. So towards the end of this video, I'm gonna pick three pieces of gear out of this kit that were crucial on this past weekend. I'm also gonna pick three pieces of gear that I probably could have left at home. And maybe I'll even throw in a couple pieces of gear that I didn't bring that I wish I would have. But here's my backpack, everything I took, still packed up fresh off the trail. So I'm gonna tell you right now, since I'm not gonna go through and tell you uh, many of the weights, this averaged out to be right around a 13 pound base weight, which is kind of a sweet spot for me as far as like, I wanna call it luxury backpacking. A lot of times if I'm really like dialing in my gear for a trip, I'll run like around an 11 pound base weight, so no consumables, no food, water, anything like that. 13 pounds on this one, a little bit heavier, and that's not including camera gear like this two pound tripod. I did take minimal camera gear on this trip, so I had about three and a half pounds of camera gear on top of the 13 pound base weight. So I was actually probably around a 20, 21, 22 pound pack with food and water and fuel. So like I said, about a 13 pound setup base weight out of all of this, that's not including stuff like this, fuel and consumables. But I'm gonna start with the big three or the big four, depending on what you count as that. First thing on the list is my backpack. This is the Light AF Curve. 40 liter full suspension model. For the shelter system, I used a Six Moon Designs Deschutes tarp with a uh, Six Moon Serenity net tent, and I combined that with their little 1.8 ounce carbon fiber uh, pole to make, I think it's like a 25 ounce shelter, all, all weight combined. And then my little stakes down here, I used uh, the good old tried and true uh, some people disagree with that. Uh, this titanium shepherd hooks never let me down. Uh, my sleeping bag is actually, this is a hammock gear quilt. This is the Econ 20 degree version. And I actually have it in its stuff sack that it came with. And then inside of this Hilltop Pax printed Dyneema food bag. So this food bag is really, really big. I actually didn't bring a pack liner on this trip and I knew that it was going to rain. I kind of went with uh, a little bit different approach and I was just going to depend on a few different Dyneema stuff sacks to waterproof all my gear. I figured if it was gonna rain or anything, I could double up by putting my down coat uh, in this because this bag really, really is huge. Along with the food bag is Dyneema that's over capacity. So I had room to make sure all my uh, necessities were waterproof. For a sleeping pad, I use the Thermarest NeoAir X-Lite. Over here, I have my headlamp. This is the Petzl Ico Core. Uh, tons and tons of battery life out of this. Not the most comfortable headlamp in the world, but combined with the sack here, it makes a nice lantern. And I really just enjoy that, having a rechargeable headlamp. My little ditty bag here, I have a Mora Eldris knife. I actually have some coffee in here that's left over. And I have my Light AF little rock sack for the bear bag with my bear line in it. Also more ditty bag stuff here is my KFC spork, some chapstick, toothbrush, little chamois cloth, and this is my uh, poop kit basically. Ziploc bag with a deuce of spades trowel, uh, toilet paper, and hand sanitizer. And I actually brought a Spot Gen 3 along with me as well. Moving up to my cook kit, I just have a tiny little four ounce a uh, container of fuel pots. I have a Toke 600 milliliter titanium with the lid. And then inside of that, I actually have the uh, 450 milliliter cup. Inside of that, I have a BRS stove. I have a little uh, piece of some type of uh, like steel wool cloth to use as a pot, pot holder and a lighter. And that all goes into my pot koozie that I made out of uh, Reflectix, or I actually made this out of a uh, sun visor, like the thing you put in your, uh, your front window of your car. Up here I have my Light AF Little Bear bag. Uh, it's a flat bottom Dyneema uh, food bag. This is actually gross, it's still wet and nasty from the trip. This is my GSI Java Drip. I put coffee filters in that and make fresh coffee pour over on the trail. Moving on to clothing, I brought a North Face fleece, super cheap, super lightweight fleece. It's like the cheapest kind they make. I have my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisper 
not super cheap. One of the more expensive down jackets out there. Um, I really like this one though. I have my Montbell uh, wind shirt. I think this is a, uh, I'm not sure, tachyon, I think, a wind shirt. Super light though, it's like two ounces, I believe. Two extra pair of smart wool socks and these little dual layer latex gloves uh, that I use in the rain that uh, go in this red uh, bag. The red bag is my clothing bag. I also have uh, really, really thin fleece pants, uh, frog togs pants cut down into rain shorts. Uh, my rain jacket is a six ounce rain jacket from Dick Sporting Goods, it's a Columbia. Very, very cheap, not very waterproof. I also brought my Helinox Chair Zero. This is in another uh, printed Dyneema bag from Hilltop Packs. On to water, I carried two 23 ounce life water bottles and an additional two liters of dirty water carrying capacity because we had a 12 mile stretch on the trail uh, that was going to be dry. And for filtering, I have a little Sawyer squeeze that I keep in a Ziploc baggie inside a scoop that I use to scoop out of uh, the creeks or rivers and pour into my dirty water bags. Kind of unrelated to backpacking, but camera gear, I brought uh, three extra batteries for my camera, my DSLR, and an extra one or two SD cards I had in here. And then I bring a MiPhoto uh, backpacker air tripod. It's like a two pound tripod. So looking over all this gear, I'm gonna go ahead and pick three pieces of gear that were crucial uh, for me having a good time out there on the trail. Uh, number one uh, was my Montbell wind shirt. I absolutely love this thing just for the little bit of warmth it provides uh, wind protection and as small as it packs and as light as it is. Uh, this is this is definitely one of my favorite pieces of clothing. Um, once I got out there, we were on the Appalachian Trail Ridge. It's March, not a lot of cover. There's no leaves on the trees yet. So I didn't really expect it or I kind of overlooked the fact that I was gonna be in like full sun exposure um, you know, most of the time on that trip because we even when we were off the AT, we were still riding a ridge the whole way back. But uh, I didn't bring sunscreen. I didn't bring uh, really any long sleeve layers other than like a fleece, a puffy jacket, and a rain jacket. So when I uh, it was trying to find something to put on, I actually forgot that I packed this. And I was so happy I packed this thing. It, it doesn't breathe the best, but for cooler weather and especially like uh, starting out hiking on cold mornings, uh, it's it's a really good layer that you can throw on and you don't have to worry about pulling your old pack out and uh, putting it back away. But this was really, really good to uh, keep the sun off me and it did its job. Number two piece of crucial gear, and it might have been the most crucial, it are my uh, little latex surgical gloves here. These uh, dual nitrile, uh, steel nitrile gloves or whatever they are. Um, so my hands get super, super cold in the rain. Like it doesn't really even matter how cold it is. It was actually not cold when we were hiking in the rain on that second day, probably in the 50s, uh, maybe, yeah, probably in the 50s. And it doesn't take much if my hands get cold. My rain jacket is really small. It doesn't pull over my hands. It's, it's just completely too small to pull and cover over my hands. So I have to wear gloves when I have this rain jacket. I was gonna bring a different rain jacket, but I, I just couldn't find it when I was packing, uh, packing for this trip. But these, uh, your hands get wet inside from sweating because they don't really breathe, but it kind of acts kind of like a wetsuit to where you uh, it heats up the water that's in the glove and uh, it keeps you warm. So this was probably the most crucial piece of gear that I brought. I've only been doing this for about a year or so and these, as light as they are and as warm as they keep my hands, until I find a better rain option for gloves, these are probably going to come with me on every single trip. And my third favorite piece of gear from this trip, um, I could go a lot of different ways on this one. Puffy jacket has never let me down. A lot of people say that it's not very warm for a puffy. Um, I'm never cold in it, so I, I kind of disagree. I will say that it's not the warmest jacket, but paired with a fleece and a base layer, which I actually didn't bring ba any base layers on this trip because it was so warm. Other than this, I wore a t-shirt and shorts, but I, I think that's warm. It never lets me down. Uh, the backpack has never failed me. Love this pack. It's comfortable. It carries well. But I'm going to go with a new piece of gear, which is the Six Moons Deschutes Tarp. Um, it did super well. Uh, over the night, it was really calm, not a lot of wind. Uh, there was no moisture, no uh, condensation on, I don't think, anybody's tents in the morning. It was really just a perfect night uh, to sleep. And uh, although I'm not sure how it performs in inclement weather, this tarp is awesome and something I really, really like about it is uh, you don't 
have to like reach down to the ground and put your head in the wall to reach the zipper because it's so high up off the ground. It's super accessible. So the ease of getting in and out of this shelter is super convenient and I really, really like, I uh, really liked using it. Already good at setting it up. It's super quick. Uh, I like that one. So pieces of gear that I could have done without. You know, if we would have been camping on night two during the rain, I would have uh, waterproofed my gear a little bit better. Like I probably would have threw my rain shorts on instead of just soaking the ones I was wearing. I would have did things differently. I didn't care because we were gonna be out of there in a few hours. Uh, but gear I didn't use. Let's see, so I had two pair of socks. Clothing's tough because if we would have stayed out there as long as we were supposed to, I would have used all these clothes. Uh, water storage, I definitely didn't need two extra liters. I could have been fine with one extra bag here. Even during this 12 mile section, I filled up uh, one liter and then I filled up these two bottles and I ended up only drinking a little bit less than like one bottle during the whole 12 mile section. It was just wet and, and, and it wasn't super hot or humid or anything. So I wasn't really drinking a ton of water, but I could have uh, went with less water. Uh, number two, the chair. You know, the chair is great when there's not great uh, seats at camp, but we had a picnic table by an AT shelter, so it doesn't really get much better than that. I didn't use the chamois cloth because I didn't have any condensation in the tent, but I'm still not going to leave home without that. Um, I'm going to go with camera gear. I know it's kind of a cop out, but my tripod, I just didn't film a whole bunch on this trip. Sometimes I want to set up shots and film a whole bunch, and I really didn't. I think the only time I used it was to get a out of focus uh, time lapse uh, for the sunrise over McAfee's knob. So looking back at this trip, things I would have done differently, I would have totally uh, done a pack liner. So Saturday we were out there getting drenched in the rain. It was supposed to be the nicest day of the week. We weren't supposed to get rain till the day out Sunday, which is why I wasn't too concerned about it. But uh, going over everything again, I would have definitely put a pack liner in this to make sure everything was going to stay more waterproof. I should have definitely brought my other rain jacket that is way more waterproof than this one. This thing just sucks. It just, dude, I was completely soaked to the bone. And I even threw uh, my windshirt on underneath this just to kind of get an extra little vapor barrier because I knew this would soak through within minutes if it uh, was really, really downpouring. And it did, and I was just completely soaked. So a different rain jacket would have been nice. So if you guys have any questions or comments about any of this gear, uh, put it in the comment section below. And once again, if you haven't yet watched the Virginia Triple Crown Loop, check it out right up here. But I think that's gonna about do it. So subscribe down below for more videos like this in the future. Hit that little notification bell beside it so I can notify you when I upload new videos. Check me out on Instagram as well, giving that a giving that real go now, trying to build the following on the gram. And yeah, so once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.